6th of March. I'm going to do a video how my daughter and I were separated, how they used our crisis situation against me. Uh, so what happened uh, stage by stage in the process of moving home for the first time in te nearly 10 years? We travelled a lot by bus to school, new school, which took an hour to get there. It took half an hour for the bus to arrive and waiting for it. I was exhausted, I exasperated from bad stress levels and I had no support even though it was offered by a Catholic uh, foster mum. She had a very distant relationship with me and holy poop it was put wrongly in the vulnerable family category that I did not know was the main reason what caused the trigger of power advocacy from power advocacy to a court case without warning to separate mother and daughter um, so how it happened in 2014 so moving home and school and it was all good news for me because I had been living in a single accommodation single room sleeping on a sofa well, my daughter always had a room to herself forever, always. I never had a room to myself. And it was good news that I needed to move to a large two-bedroom place, and this is where I am now. And they were not happy for me because they're enemies. So not only are they the enemies of the state, they're the enemies of the people, these corrupt judges particularly coming from the vulnerable families, yet they claimed to be there to help and they made matters worse. Um, so during the crisis when I travelled uh, to the new school and it was only a three-month wait and we moved into our new home and I got so tired being faithful to my daughter, I've never been with any other man except for a man named Michael when my daughter was three years old. But that relationship only lasted for three months and I did not have sex other than my daughter's dad. But they treated me like the same as a prostitute, the same as a thief. Because that's how racist they are. And it's all one-sided. Uh, they, they, they think that my daughter and I shouldn't have moved schools for the first time. The Children's Social Services got involved and accused me of moving too often, which was a lie. Uh, they were waiting and waiting and wanting to get me in trouble. Um, and uh, this type of body that became crippled of my body that became crippled uh, as a result of traveling during that period of three months uh, on the bus and being so tired and cleaning my animals and everything else it appeared uh, I appeared tired as well but I tried my best not to appear scruffy. I did I did brush my hair and I did do a good professional presentation. But they wrote false reports and it was a half-caste neo-Nazi woman that did it. She boasted that she was half-caste neo-Nazi uh, social, senior social worker. She said that my daughter had smelled because our shower wasn't working properly, even though I contacted the new homes housing association and they were in the process of repairing it. And so they put every single problem I had 
to blame me for it. Like um, when my fish tank had exploded because I was cleaning the pets and my fish, I paid for that. Um, and at the same time, I injured my spine by accident carrying my daughter's heavy bicycle and lots of heavy things, moving the furniture to go to the new home. I paid for the broken ceiling where the fish were. It was leaking. I repaired all that before I left the old home to move to the new home. However, I couldn't repair my spine and, and I couldn't uh, apply for uh, repairs or insurance for the accident and emergency as I was unemployed and um, very fragile. It's the same as uh, exiles, servants, slaves leaving one area to another but what made it even more difficult for me is I'm on my own single mum compared to refugees or uh, Others that are displaced from their home due to a natural disaster such as a tsunami or a large area that had to be evacu evacuated, that a volcano had exploded or whatever. There, there's been a civil war or whatever else. However, I have been on my own as a lone survivor. So it was even more difficult when I had been exiled and displaced from my home in a crisis situation my community navigator what didn't really help any documents or evidence that I had was destroyed was not carried on forward and was not did not mean anything when I provided it to the new school it was meaningless so my poor eyes my poor poor eyes were so tired and uh, could see so far away in the past and in the future. New home, new school and uh, my promise is being fulfilled to my daughter that we have a new life. And then the enemy came along through Children's Social Services and destroyed all that. If it wasn't for children's social services and being put into the wrong category for vulnerable families unit, none of this would have happened. Children's social services wouldn't have gotten involved, would have not gotten involved. So I tried and I managed to fix the ceiling hole that where it was the fish tank were leaking and it exploded. I managed to fix the leak and the flood of a broken uh, thing. Uh, I did. I managed to keep my records straight and communications with the school, which was ignored. Um, I'm much more than a patriarch. I would say I'm like a hero for my daughter and I've done everything I could in the fullness of providing her her every need but whatever I did was not good enough. As a single mum I was disrespected, uh, discriminated against, um, attacked left, right and centre to be character assassinated during the crisis situation. And at the same time, I couldn't apply for insurance or any other support that would treat me with the respect that I deserve. So I had to have no choice in the matter to deal with strangers that don't care about me. For instance, my daughter's school teacher, they didn't, he did not care, the class teacher. His name was Mr. Turton. I remember speaking to him. It was, it was in the eighth hour. It wasn't the seventh hour. Uh, early in the morning. And I said, this is an emergency. I have a problem with my spine. I have to go. One of these appointments out of the blue. Take it or leave it. 
to have uh, pain relief, um, which was urgent for me because of the pain was excruciating uh, with my slipped disc and on the bus travelling. He had no sympathy. It was like speaking to a robot after the damage has been done, but not during the time I spoke to him. He was the sweetest pie. He was so nice, so sympathetic, so much empathising with me in my shoes, you know. Oh, I know how you feel and it must be terrible for you and uh, no worries, no problems, you know, you just tell your daughter to wait at the door at reception and someone will open the door. He did not warn me that they were not insured. If he really did care, he would have warned me. He did not. So he gave me the instructions, told me not to worry about it, and he'll speak to the receptionist at the school and explain the situation. I had already sent an email. I've sent voice messages, which were also ignored. They never phoned me back. So they broke their agreements. The next thing I know, I took the instructions of Mr. Turton. Uh, we, we followed his instructions, went round to, uh, around the gate to the front entrance of the school. I instructed my daughter and she saw me speaking to her class teacher that everything's okay. It's the first time I'm leaving her. I've never left her before. I've always walked her to school. She's never walked to school on her own before. And because of the one-off situation, they decided to write false reports to say that I abandoned my daughter unsupervised at age nine and a half. Um, They wrote false reports to say that I took no responsibility for my daughter, as if I had never spoken to her class teacher, as if I can, as if I'm in a situation that I cannot trust her class teacher. Mr. Turton, who had already accepted my pre- medical pre-existing conditions, that my spine had deteriorated with a slip disc and I urgently needed pain relief, which which is at the hospital. And uh, it was as if I never spoke to him because he obviously made an agreement with me, but he it's possible that he didn't actually put to practice what he preached to me. He didn't activate, he didn't put it into action, what he said he was going to do, that he hadn't, act- he hadn't actually done it yet. Uh, so he's put it off to the last minute, probably. Typical man. Even though I did say it was an emergency. And so, in other words, I was being misguided by this Mr. Turton. Oh dear, it was as if my daughter has not has not witnessed me speaking to her teacher over the gate at the back of the building. It was as if I have not taken the responsibility to put it in writing and leave voice messages to say it's an emergency. They already knew that I had sl- slipped my disc and that the pain is unbearable. They didn't care. That's what it, that's, that is the, con, that is the conclusion, that they were careless. They wanted to get me into trouble during my crisis situation. That could happen to anyone. And uh, the fact that they, ha- that they have a position of power for the teacher as a civil worker type of service means that they, as an individual or group, ought to have a lot more 
of a duty of care towards each other, their members of the staff, and the parents. But unfortunately for me, it's the other way around, that they have no respect for parents, particularly those that don't drive a car and that are single and that are widows. The They looked at me as if it was my fault that my ex-husband died. They looked at me as if I was some type of a lunatic or some type of a maniac with a mental health label. They totally misrepresented me by a deliberate evil spirit that is racist. If it wasn't racist, they would not had... They would have had taken the time to get to know me and to have some compassion, some mercy, some some sympathy. They had none. They didn't want to get to know me. They didn't want to care. They were all acting to have a duty of care, and it wasn't because they kept character assassinating me, writing false report, having the chart my my daughter's social worker put her word on top of my word so her words were more important than my words which is a total unfair thing to do to anyone and uh, this is what happened this is the consequence of being involved with mental health services um i don't have the capacity to reality I don't have any intelligence. I don't have organised thoughts or organised speech. I am illogical. Um, I cannot find solutions to any problems. Um, and so this is these are all the lies that the authorities can write about me uh, and get away with it because of a mental health label even a minor mental health label such as a personality disorder can be wrongly portrayed to other professionals as someone that could be dangerous in the community as if I was some type of a schizophrenic or some type of a lunatic or a maniac and of course that I'm not I dress like a lady I don't dress like a punk I talk like a lady, I don't talk like a slag. And the very ones that actually do talk like a slag and dress like and and go around as a punk or a pimp, they're never labelled or touched or persecuted by the government. They only pick on, cherry pick on, people that are half decent, that are Christians, and that are legal migrants that are unemployed claiming eligible state benefits. Which it which is against human rights, and uh, it's 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 deliberate institution oppressive legislation in the school state school. They also had been tested by by testing uh, authorities, and they have been marked very poor. Uh, poor score for school primary school. So behind the scenes, they were scheming to get me into trouble during my worst situation. And this is how they became the winner and I became the loser because they gagged up, they ganged up on me soon after that to establish a court hearing without a public review meeting that was supposed to have taken place. Uh, in May and June, but they did not. And they did an illegal thing to take me to court without any warning. I managed to find a solicitor immediately. A lot of my money that I claimed for my eligible state benefits, I was exploited, taken off. It was removed for me for travel expenses, 
to find a solicitor for family law and then apply for a legal aid. By then it was too late because Children's Social Services have too much power from the government compared to parents and our legal aid. Even if I was to pay thousands of pounds from my private pocket for health insurance and things, they couldn't wait to start war because they were so jealous and envious that I had a new home, a new beginning and a new school. And they literally said that. I'm not imagining that they thought that. I heard them say it. You know, you should quote unquote this uh, German Sarah and Freuken and Miss Workman at the school. Uh, quote unquote, they don't believe that we should have ever left that school. <laughs> they, Because they know I don't drive. So they held that against me. Um, so they were picking up my weaknesses. You should not be a mum because you don't drive a car. You should not be a mum because you don't have a, di uh, a dick or you don't have a, you're not LGBTQ or you're not a lesbian and you're not with a sex partner. And number three, you cannot be a mum because you're unemployed. So these three things, what does that mean? Who is allowing this to happen in England, United Kingdom, in our state schools? What authority? So I'm part of Hertfordshire Authority. And uh, so they had listened to the particular social workers' management and their perspective on things. To say I don't have a normal social life, to say that I have had a long-term use of mental health services by force, I'm tortured and my daughter's no, no, has no home with me, even though my daughter has lived with me for 10 years and was happy and did not want to leave me, did not want to be separated. So they deliberately came to steal and destroy what I was trying to build and rebuild. And uh, so this is what happened. My back slipped disc, severe sciatica, sacrifices I made for traveling and finding a new home. The hard work I've done totally destroyed by false reports of children's social services to say that I had disgustedly left my daughter behind while I had gone to hospital is the way they had said it. And uh, in the defence of, of the teacher I spoke to, to say that uh, he denied ever telling me that it was okay. Uh, he denied ever... He denied the fact that he should have told me uh, and he didn't tell me that they were not insured and that I wasn't allowed to do it, to leave my daughter, even in an emergency. So he, t he, he betrayed me. They were waiting and watching. Uh, so they pre-planned all of this, um, which, which, is, which is devastating for me. Uh, it's, it's, an, it's oppressive. It's bullying. Uh, it's bullying by three three headmistress women in the school new, in the new school, and my daughter's class teacher, Mister Turton, his name was. So Mrs. Fode, Mrs. Workman, Mrs. Freuken, and Mister Mister Turton, four of them. So this is what happened and how it happened. So that and then the the German half caste neo Nazi, the socialist who kept dis didn't even give me a chance to unpack my suitcases and things and criticise the way my home looks, that it looks old-fashioned and it's not modern-looking enough. I said, give us a chance. We haven't even unpacked yet, let alone decorate yet. You guys, she's look, putting her... She, she came to put her nose and her head down my toilet while I was being... while I had sickness and diarrhoea. She didn't even bother letting me know that she was coming. She came by an unannounced visit. Um, she sent police officers at nine o'clock at night to ask if my daughter 
was being hurt or harmed by me is totally, she's gone off her hedge. The social worker had gone off of her hedge. It's total illogical thinking. Whatever took her fancy, whatever she wanted to write, which was negative and wrong, uh, she just made injustice for me. She created it as a freak of nature, a spider spinning a web, um, and it freaked me out. It 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 it, it made my skin crawly. It creeped me out. I remember my daughter fell on a doormat, and I went to grab her arm like this to to stop her falling further. And I managed to catch her. And then the bruise bruise appeared on her arm, and they asked her, "Where did the bruise come from?" And she said, "Oh, one she something fell on me, and I fell and." Two things happened. Something did fall on her and she did fell, fall. Which, you know, most children do fall. And so they made something out of nothing. They Something trivial they would make into something huge. Continually pick on me and my family as a single parent for fault, even when there is no fault. So that's my, that's my argument, if there is an argument, in full. Uh, to reveal the mystery as to how, when, and why they decided to se separate me from my daughter. All for the wrong reasons. Nothing to do with my spine injury. Nothing to do with the fact that I could not look after my daughter because of my disability. And everything to do with the fact that I had been tortured, I had no friends and family, and that uh, I was involved with mental health for a long time. So what? They're there to be my support system. And I haven't committed any crime. I have a clean and clear record with mental health services so so what other people have mental health labels and take care of children so these are the three wrong reasons they use to separate me from my daughter and in fact they're the ones who prevented me from having social life because every year they would come and knock on my door as children's social services since the death of my daughter's dad in 2012 he died by natural causes. He smoked excessively and drank alcohol. He was very violent towards me. <coughs> I didn't stop him seeing my daughter. I was startled by him when I had learnt what he had done. That is disgusting. And so all of this was to get revenge for an Englishman. This is what the local authority with Children's Social Services have done to my family. This is what it is. It's covered up organised crime to get revenge to say it's my fault that somehow an Englishman had died. And of course it isn't. And number two, my daughter would be better off without me, without me in an education system. So it's okay for them to indoctrinate my daughter, but it isn't okay for me to teach my daughter about God and Jesus. Um, um, uh, <laughs> it's okay for the grandmother to teach my daughter about the fairy, little creatures and the gremlins and, and, and the goblins. And to teach my daughter about romanticism and sexism and uh, all this. But it isn't okay for me to teach my daughter anything. Which goes to show it is racism. It's racist, racist, racist authority. <clears throat> Breaking uh, any contract of agreement they made with me. Totally disrespecting everything to do with my name. And any opportunity I have had, or any last chance I had, 
to establish a regular pattern of contact with my daughter after they took her from me, they destroyed, they got in the way by creating some problem and then blaming it on me, including the main problem was the emotion, emotional trauma and detachment disorder my daughter had. <clears throat> she had to go on the longest waiting list to receive the help that my daughter needed, which made me very angry. So how can I hide? I don't want to hide anymore. I've been hiding enough. It's nearly nine years, eight years. The disunity of Christians. I couldn't go to church because of a mental health label. I couldn't take my daughter to school because of a mental health label. I couldn't make any friends because of my mental health label. And I couldn't even... Keep my ex-husband's filthy hands off of my daughter because the way he because he saw the way the government was ill-treating me and torturing me, that's why he abused her because of them. And because of the, the fact that his son had died. And it, it, it hurt his feelings. But then why? Would he want to hurt his youngest child because his oldest child died? That doesn't make any sense. His oldest child had never lived with him and his oldest child, he was never interested in his son. And I wanted him to, but he didn't want to. Uh, so he is... Everything was blamed and shamed on me. My entire life has been destroyed and ruined because of this evil man, my ex-husband. And in fact, they're remembering him as a hero when in fact he is an abuser, a sponger and a user. And everyone's remembering me as some type of a witch, as some type of a... Uh, prostitute because my mum is a prostitute or because I'm an orphan or outcast from a foreign country that's how I'm treated so the judgments they made in court were unfair the contacts that they made were unfair the, con the conclusion that I have expressed in this video why they think it's best for my daughter not to live with me anymore for the wrong reasons were unfair. Uh, they ignored, they deliberately ignored my disabilities and medical uh, problems. And they deprived me uh, the opportunity to recover. Meantime, my daughter could forget about me. She didn't have to remember anything. She's not in the same house. I'm still stuck in the same house. So they are beneath me. They're the, the worst filth anyone could ever imagine. Kidnappers. False witnesses. Unholy. They're the ones who are mad. Perverts. Whatever they imagined was wrong was put down on record as whatever they imagined and they're going to put it right. Something that never even happened, they said had happened. And what actually did happen was never revealed, except for the video that I'm doing here. And my neighbours in the new home for the first time in 10 years did not help. My daughter's new school for the first time in 10 years did not help. Um, I haven't tried the church because I, I, I didn't have the chance. I went straight into a 
we're, well, wheelchair, but I was bed, bed bound for 2016, 17, 18 and 19. I am now walking. And the next thing I know is I'm getting threats and my privacy invaded by the same hooligans, lunatics and the corrupt police in my local area and county officials. None of their business. What I have locked in my Google account is, is nothing to do with them. Uh, my social life has nothing to do with them. Um, <clears throat> my accounts, my bank account, my uh, shopping lists, all of this. I didn't have an adult social worker. And if I have one in the future, it would only be to help me move home. But I don't think I could trust it. Because they're the same government who had kidnapped my daughter. So I'm stuck by an oppressive legislation and servitude that is supposed to support people such as me are destroying my freedom, my right to have an operation on my surgery to go well. It was cancelled by the government. Um, my right to have religious freedom was treated as if I indoctrinated my daughter. They attacked me and said um, that I didn't allow my daughter the freedom to be part of the Western world, which is wrong. I used to go to the cinema with my daughter a lot. She had a lot of love and affection for me. Even though I was sick, I sacrificed a lot for my daughter, but she forgot everything in the light that I didn't have any liberty my liberty was sacrificed for my daughter so I didn't put down on my front door beware of the kid beware of the dog I don't have a dog I don't have a cat I had a hamster I had a hedgehog I had a guinea pig I had rabbit I had um I had all these animals for my daughter. She even had an African snails. She, she took care of animals. She had a very caring nature and personality. Since they took her from me, her personality has been destroyed. Her soul had been destroyed. She's only there to serve a system of abuse and say there's nothing wrong with it. Where in reality, when she wakes up from her nightmarish dream of existence, she will come to realise that everything's wrong with it. Instead, I had put on my front door after they took my daughter from me, the German... logo that they had at Artswitz to kill and murder all the Jews Swartz sticker to say beware of them little did I know how widespread they actually are in England and in every nation around the world, particularly Europe. So I'm being educated. <coughs> I'm being educated as I do this video. <coughs> to turn it up, <coughs> not turn it off. <coughs> How to get rid of these slave masters that are keeping me and my daughter in bondage or captivity and they use the excuses that she needs it for her education and she, she needs to have a better life than me that's what they're saying which is evil so it's not a fair and equal society if anything 
um, my education has been denied. I went to boarding school, wasted all that money that they forced me to spend on a boarding school. I didn't have anything left to live on. They, they denied me books at school and college. And they expect students to pay a lot of money to do their... Um, courses and their curriculums which should be absolutely free the same for the hospital treatments and uh, the prison treatments so now I'm going to go into a private prison I'm going to go into a private hospital I'm going to go to a private mental health nut house and be persecuted all my life as a result of the English corrupt government. Or, alternatively, I can pack a few belongings in a bag with me and run away as a runaway slave. Because I'm no one's slave. My life has been tragedy since I was seven years old. And... Uh, I have struggled, struggled all my life. I've suffered. I don't think I've known anything else than being a slave. And now my daughter is one too. So the result. is to find either a judge or somebody else who could do a new hearing for my family to give my daughter a choice, but she says she hates judges because she's now demon-possessed, probably, or obsessed for the handy work they did to turn my daughter against me. Uh, so they... <laughs> deserve to have as kidnappers a death threat on their lives however before they have a death threat they should be tortured because they tortured the innocent they didn't torture the guilty with 10 different tortures or 20 different tortures for my door number where they started it totally innocent painting and decorating my home um, used my painting against me, taking a carpet out of my home to, 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 to purchase a new carpet. They wrote false reports about me. Um, any opportunity, any chance they had to write false reports, it was granted to them. Granted, granted. These evil, greedy pigs, what they have done to chip and chop away. After they chopped me and cut me into pieces by sections, then then threatened me with a chainsaw, then they threatened me with a drill and other tortures unimaginable. So that's a horror. And um, <sighs> my God and my guardian angel will send Jesus' blood for me and my daughter if she accepts it, but God will not send send it to my daughter if she does not accept it <sighs> as a Passover passing over this evil as they do the blood of Jesus they do a blood of Satan too they've done a duplicate copy direct copy of it everything the covenant for satanic worship instead of God's worship which is oh, dreadful.
No wonder everything's corrupted and upside down. <sighs> My Bible says put something heavy around their necks and drown them. Instead, that's what they want to do to me. And say to me that God does not exist. That I am the cursed, that they are the blessed chosen ones. That's what they actually want. And the moment they see me trying to help myself, try and make some progress, even if it's a little bit at a time, I don't expect a lot. I'm a reasonable person. They will say, number one, I do expect a lot. And number two, they will say that I am the slave master. If I was a slave master, I'd be a better one than what they are. At least I'd know how to treat people as they liked, as I like to be treated. So we were reading the Bible to close this video. Quote, unquote. To my daughter. And she liked it so much we made a joke. I don't remember where in the Bible. I think it's a book of Proverbs. And the bed will be taken from under you. She said, yeah, mum, that's what Mr. Turton deserves. And then the next thing we know, we get a knock on the door and the witch take my daughter away from me. And the neighbours laugh at me at the same time and say, hey, that mad woman doesn't deserve to have kids. And doesn't doesn't deserve to have a hand clump on her window. So it's an extremism, social and domestic terrorist. This this particular social worker. Who's this, who's my senior? She's she's old enough to be my great grandmother or grandmother. Old witch. Yep, she took my daughter away from me by force under section 20 of, of the rulings. Which I don't remember what it stands for. It stands for something. And now they say I'm under-occupied in a two-bedroom property... So they won't repair my shower properly. I have to find a worker to repair it for me instead of them. So the housing association is is one what the same party. The local authority is the same party. The Children of Social Services is the same part, same party. The education system is the same party. What? The answer is Antichrist. They kill, steal, they destroy, they steal, then they destroy, and then they kill. Steal, destroy, kill. Oh, there is a fourth thing. They call themselves gods. And there is a fifth thing. They become pregnant. And they populate as aliens in the world. They're not God's people. So it's a tragedy what they've done. It's more than a tragedy, it's a horror.
And it was because my daughter's new school members of staff that are important members of staff, such as deputy, headmaster and mistress, it was a woman, or older woman, was frustrated she couldn't get pregnant. She took her frustrations out on me. The other woman, woman had three or four children and she, they all ganged up on me. They saw I was young. They saw I was young. They saw I was suffering. And they saw that I was trying to keep my head above water. While at the same time they wanted to drown me in my crisis. During a flood. <sighs> during the travelling experience which was exasperating my bad stress levels. And the pain in my back and my bottom. They said, oh, why don't you walk to school when the buses were were not working? I couldn't believe them, as if there was nothing wrong with my back. They said, they used to say, oh, you're milking it and uh, you're making it seem worse than it actually is. Which is embarrassing. Very embarrassing. Very shameful. They wouldn't like it happen to them and they know it. So this is exactly what happened. Now I'm doing this video, I don't have to repeat myself. I can just press play. It's about an hour long. And it is now completed. Um... Maybe somebody somewhere has humility. But all I've ever known is humiliation. It's very, it's very sad to know that the majority are that way inclined. I had no idea. I imagined my best positive thinking that it's half, half. Maybe 50-50. Now I see how mistaken I am. It's not. There's certainly more evil people about than there are holy people. There are more unholy people about. Because the living dead are zombies. They have a breath. But every breath that they take, it is their to create hate crime antisocial behaviour fear mongering war mongering hatred against religion and God so these haters <laughs> probably probably had been abused too and then they say abusers become abu abused become abusers. And I say, well, in reality, that's not true. Very rarely does that happen. But now I've come to think that uh, I may have been mistaken. It could be the other way around that uh, very few abused individuals don't actually become abusers. So it could be the other way around. <sighs> so I've been mistaken with the statistics. What do I know? <coughs> it's different in every country and it depends what area you live in. It's disproportionate numbers here and there. If you live in a rich area, poor area, ghetto area, what do I know? And as for my estranged family, they didn't want to know. Their only interest was themselves. They didn't want to share their lives. 
And this is the sad fact that the majority of white Europeans don't share their lives with their relatives. Whereas black people and dark-skinned people do. Which is an interesting statistic. And that makes me go against white supremists. If I had to have a boss and a master and a slave master, I would rather have a black one than a white one. Because they take care of their, their own. And they're more reasonable. <clears throat> or they would kill the slave rather than torture it. As far as, as far as statistics go, I am proud with holy pride that as an abuser I have not become the as the abused I have not become the abuser and if I had the opportunity to be a tyrant, it would be to bully the bullies to abuse the people that have been abusers deliberately, not those who have no choice. So, I'm closing this video, it's been exactly an hour long, it is the middle of March 2022, I don't want to waste any more time repeating myself, now that this is recorded, I don't have to repeat myself anymore. The truth is now known. How the very thing that my daughter was joking on. The bed will be taken from under you, Mr. Turton. May God condemn you, Mr. Turton. <laughs> for doing me and my mum wrong. It ended up going the other way around because of the power of the government. And the bad angels. May I ask, where is my God's power to destroy my enemies? Because we have been overpowered, outnumbered and unfairly challenged. So the joke had been put on my daughter instead. She, she had been condemned, condemned instead by her teacher's hatred for legal migrants living in England claiming eligible state benefits, being crippled, being single, whatever else they're going to find to put me in, to put fault on me. So, so annoying. Every time they fail in something and they don't succeed in something, I don't go around pointing my fingers at their weaknesses and their flaws. There's nothing more worse than pesty people. One of them, let alone 50. Or oh, thousands. I'm going to close this video now. How I feel at the end. It has been a nightmare. I'm still on the sofa. Because of my disability, it has. It's easier to clean regularly with a spray and a bed, and easier to get up. I, I have got a mattress here, and uh, I can hold a easily arm like an armchair. Hold the arm, get up. Uh, my disability is a lot better, but I'm still very fragile and very, very um, sensitive. Hi, I, I don't want to be 
I'm not emotionally hypersensitive. Um, but I am sensitive. I normally ignore the insults. I've been wearing earplugs 24-7, so I didn't have to hear it in a hostile environment. And uh, not wearing earplugs anymore from an ear infection and perforated eardrum. I had gone through so much hell. My only thing to say to close this video, my time is up. This is supposed to be the best time of my life. My daughter will have a choice. It's either me or them. Um, she knows that I love her. She's too embarrassed about it. I have to to choose my words carefully and rephrase the word love you to I care about you <sighs> everything has been destroyed by the destroyers and by the betrayers by the inhumane living dead zombies that I want nothing to do with <sighs>